So I've been working on uh, user-centered design in the privacy space for a long time now. Uh, I think that um, often when we develop privacy tools, the user side is the most often forgotten side. Um, you know, it's great that we have sophisticated privacy controls, but if they don't make sense to users, then users won't use them. They'll ignore them. They may not even be aware that they exist in the first place. And so the way to improve on that is to actually do studies with users and find out first of all, what users are looking for, what their needs are uh, from a privacy tool, um, and, then, uh, and then to test uh, your prototypes with users and see what's working, what's not working, um, and do it in context. Um, so you, know, you can show somebody an interface and point to it and say, hey, do you know what this button is? Right? Can you, does this wording make sense? And they might you know, give you a pretty good answer. Um, but if instead you point somebody to a privacy tool and ask them how they would accomplish a specific task or what do they think they could do with this interface, now in context, it may turn out that they have no idea and it, it actually um, need, needs a lot of work to, to be improved. So that's the kind of work that we've been doing um, in, in our lab at Carnegie Mellon, um, uh, working with users and trying to find approaches to address these sorts of problems. So I think companies Companies need to loop users into the process from the beginning. Uh, so they need to do uh, surveys or focus groups with um, their customers or the types of people who are in their target audience, uh, find out what their uh, needs are related to privacy, what their preconceived notions are related to privacy, um, and make sure that their privacy interfaces address those needs. Um, once they have interfaces, um, either prototype or ex already existing in their products, they need to actually test with users from that target population uh, to make sure that it's actually working for users.